Welcome to Winners Wallets and Worldviews, the only show that's gonna teach you how to be somebody. Where in your life did you learn that you're not gonna take what you're most passionate about and what you're most fearful of? What is the plan to overcome that fear and what is the plan to enact that passion? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Winners Wallets and World Views. I am your host, AJ Armstrong. You can follow me on Instagram at Aaron Armstrong33, or you can go to my website at Aaron Armstrong, Aaron J Armstrong, excuse me, dot com. So we are very pleased to have an incredible guest on our show today. Very pleased. Oh, I forgot to introduce Marissa. So yeah, Marissa's eavesdropping <laughs> in on this one. She's gonna be um, a guest, and we're gonna ping off each other as we interview our upcoming guests here. So our, inter- our guest we have today is going to be Jolie. Is it Rizzo still, or did she change her last name? That's a good question. Do you, you know got to ask her. Oh, Jolie, did you change your last name? What's your formal name now? Because she mm-hmm. just got married, guys. This is a pretty big deal. <laughs> yes, just got married in July. Legally, my name is still Rizzo, but I have changed all of my social media over to Rose. Jolie, Jolie Rose. Rose. Yeah, so that's what I'm going by for business and everything now. That just felt like the... I don't know. It just felt like a good decision as I'm kind of adopting this new name, this new piece of me. Do I need to like I edit out it. your old name? Is that like a secret now? It's like a stage name or? It's not, you can leave it. It's not, secret. <laughs> I actually love it. I still have friends from high school who call me Riz and just, I always get the little grease like associations and stuff, but it's all good. You pronounce your married name Pinero, right? Pinero. Like you roll the R. Yeah. It it means pine tree. That's Greece, right? That's Greek. So it's Portuguese, but um, (laughs) my name actually means uh, pretty rose pine tree. So if you're kind of going off of like Jolie in French means pretty and then rose. So it's pretty rose pine tree. So if I'm ever a stripper, that'll be my Pretty my street name. I like that. <laughs> nice. That's, <laughs> That's <awesome>. hilarious. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so Jolie, you are uh, an intuitive coach. You do spiritual work with people and um, you do a lot of work with the human body and fitness as well and how that all kind of merges together. Uh, Jolie, can you just give us a little background and maybe some of your professional background, a little bit about your business and kind of what led you into this path? Sure. Yeah. So I always kind of say that fitness was my foot in the door to this kind of world and becoming the coach that I am. I kind of identify myself as a spiritual alignment coach. And I just, I absolutely love what I do, but I wear a lot of different hats in the day to day. So I do run an at-home personal training business, um, which I kind of coined the term intuitive personal training, where I travel to people's homes and kind of feel out what they need in the moment in that day uh, while keeping their goals in mind, their long-term goals, but really just, you know, working with kind of the workaholic type people or the people who can't seem to get out of their own head and get out of their own way. Those are the people that I love to, yeah, those are the people I love to train. Um, That's interesting. So this is, this is, I guess, kind of Marissa's your realm a little bit too, but This is where we were, Marissa and I were talking about this, and I think it's kind of like a, maybe a huge contrast from how I was brought up to think about fitness. So I like to just get completely killed with my workouts to the point where I'm like laying on the ground, falling apart, my whole body aches, and I sleep like a baby that night. And then, you know, Marissa's just like, no, no, it's much different when you're training and working out with women because, you know, it's just so much different on how the body responds and how your emotions respond, your emotions play into it. Because I would have just thought, you know, college football player, I'm just going to work out till I pass out. And that's just what you do. And it wasn't until I met Marissa, she's like, no, no, it's everybody's a lot different. And one of her sayings is like, everybody is a snowflake. And it's just, how does that kind of contrast with how you train? Because obviously I'm representing kind of that masculine style where I just don't, I just want to be beat to death. And that's much different than what you do. <laughs> yeah. And that's not uncommon, but I love the association of, you know, everybody is a snowflake because it, it's so true. But what I'm finding more and more, and Marissa, I'm sure you're finding this too, is people, more and more people are coming to, um, I don't want to say people like us, but they're, they're looking for something that's going to be functional, that's going to allow them to move through their day with ease, that they're going to be able to run around with their kids, they're going to be able to get out of their head for an hour of the day. And sometimes my sessions with people are roll, you know, just rolling around on foam rollers, or 
um, you know, doing simple movements to kind of ease different pains or aches that they're feeling in their body. So Marissa and I have talked quite a bit about this. I think we have kind of a, a similar approach when it comes to this. And Marissa, I think you're totally an intuitive trainer too. It's, you know, you're giving people what they need in that day. And it's not that you're forgetting their goals or things, but someone who walks in the door and is looking to train for a marathon is going to look very different than someone who walks in the door and is like, Hey, like, I just want to feel good in my body and be able to like move without pain. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I totally agree with all of this. And I feel that as I've, you know, I've been a personal trainer now for over eight years, which is crazy to say. And I feel like within my experience, I have built this like intuitive sense of knowing where, you know, this person may be looking for fat loss and maybe looking to lose like 50 pounds, but you know what? It, the right way to go about this would not be to just put the person in a state of stress all the time with their workouts where you are like how AJ said, just pounding them into the ground constantly. Cause you want to raise their heart rate. You want that fat burn, um, state. And I think it really, you have to kind of tailor it back to, you know, there's a reason why maybe somebody has put on like excess amount of weight where they're looking to lose 50 pounds and you almost have to like nurture them at first, kind of walk them through exactly what they're expecting. Because I think just, you know, pounding them into the ground, as AJ would say, um, would actually just do more harm in the beginning than good, because you really do have to ease them into something that they're unfamiliar with. And I think you as the trainer and kind of intuitively knowing what they need, um, what is the saying that, you know, you have to, you bring them in on what they need, but you give them, what's we'll the sell saying? them what they want, give them what, give they, them need. what they need. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Exactly. And then once you really show them, you kind of bring them through this process of, you know, Amazon. maybe doing more mobility training or, you know, stretching and just kind of moving your body. Like you said, Julie, rolling around on a foam roller that they're going to feel so good afterwards and that they actually did, you know, receive a little bit of a workout and that they're actually feeling good in their body when they leave the session. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's, I, I actually, I, I've actually gotten into, I don't, I don't know if they're arguments per se, but there are so many trainers who actually disagree with the way that I train because it's, I do keep different files for my clients. Like I have different files where I'll stock maybe three of the workouts that we do. But as far as the programming, the programming looks very, very different because I don't actually know what I'm doing with them until they walk in the door, till I walk into their door because I'm going to their home. And so because of that, it's a very fluid way of training. And it's actually something I've had to, it sounds funny, I've had to like work in getting this feminine flow. Because when I first became a trainer, like I'm sure you were the same way. It's, you know, more of like what AJ was talking about. It's like that masculine form of training where you like, you're stuck in this phase of like, okay, like I'm helping people kind of lose body fat and they want me to kick their ass and they want me to do this, but like, wait, that doesn't actually excite me. And there's so much more that I can give. And that's kind of how I got into this position with, I don't even like calling it fitness. It's just purposeful movement has been the hmm. terminology I like to use with that. That's cool. So you, the word we keep coming up with, so intuitive fitness, or I guess purposeful movement, but the, what I'm curious about, and when we talked a little bit about this before in kind of the pre-show was just kind of, how do you, when you go about making decisions in life, so switching gears, I guess, into more of like the lifestyle of things, how do you differentiate between intuitive decision-making and impulsive decision-making? So these are some of the things that I know I struggled with um, for a while because I thought that doing things out of kind of off the hip or off the cuff or something like that was the right way to start acting intuitively. When I ended up finding out was a lot of that stuff was fueled out of ego. A lot of those decisions were fueled um, from places that weren't necessarily the higher path. And sometimes you have to go against what you want to respond intuitively as well. And I just want to hear your take on that because you, you work with so many people on this. And you're yeah. definitely an expert at doing intuitive decision making. And what do you think about all that? Yes, I love that you think I'm I'm an expert in intuitive decision making because I love that that kind of a lot of people come to me with these questions, and I love that I've done a lot of work in this area too, and so it excites me to talk about it. Um, so a lot of the I, I do spiritual virtual spiritual alignment coaching too with people, and so that's kind of the 
people that I work with in this area who kind of come to me with the question of like, okay, I want to like tune into my soul's purpose. Like I want to know, you know, like what my soul is asking me to do. And, you know, one of the first questions I'll ask them is like, okay, like how, you know, how is your intuitive, you know, how's your intuition? Like, have you kind of like, have you built that relationship? And the more we talk about it, because your intuition is your soul's voice they're like, oh my gosh, like, I had no idea that, like, that, you know, that they were even connected, like, and they, you know, they're, they're at this very, you know, strange phase where they, like, need to learn what their intuition is, and, you know, same questions of, like, okay, well, like, what's impulse, and what's intuition, and super common question, and I love to kind of answer this in, like, different, there's kind of almost, I guess, four layers, it's not really four steps, but when I'm going into, you know, asking people like, okay, intuition versus impulse or impulsivity, the first kind of layer is like, okay, like know that you have made an intuitive decision or a gut decision. I use those kind of interchangeably in your life. So at some point you have made an intuitive decision and just like let that sink in and let yourself know, okay, like that, you know, that that's something that you've done. Okay. Okay. And so diving into that feeling of like, okay, where in your life did you have that, you know, that funny feeling that something it, you just knew it was going to work out, right? You just knew it was going to work out. And then it actually turned out to be true. It worked out for the better or the way that you kind of envisioned it to be, right? So what you're actually doing when you're doing this is you're actually recognizing, okay, like I have had that gut reaction in the past. And so it helps you kind of bring that into the present. And I recognize that that sounds kind of vague. And so sure. I'd love to bring your, like, so you guys just bought a car, right? Or your Mercedes, I don't want to call it a car. It's like a limo, right? You guys just bought it. A, is, it no, it's a limo. It's a limo. And so This is a big deal. It's a big yeah. deal. Okay. And so you guys had to, t- <laughs> you guys had to test, test drive, right? And so I always like the car example with this. So like you test drove probably a few, you probably talked to a few people selling them. But I, I bet like at least one of you, if not both of you kind of had this like gut reaction when you saw this one of like, oh, I want this to happen, right? Like I, yeah. I you're, you kind of had that feeling. And so diving deeper into that and like kind of that second layer is like, okay, what's the physical response that you're feeling? Is the physical response like, you know, are you getting tingles down your arm? Are you getting butterflies in your stomach? Are you naturally smiling like what kinds of things are you feeling okay and that's where it kind of you you start to separate it like you start to see like okay if I'm feeling guilty or weird or if it's feeling heavy in my chest like that's kind of a okay like maybe that's going to be a no but that's kind of that second layer and I don't want to okay so let me make sure I I think I understand this so in, in a way you're kind of using the stimulus of the body and like a muscle memory, for lack of a better word, I guess maybe more of like a neuro yeah, like the visceral reaction. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So you're using, you're basically trying to draw equivalence to intuitive decisions made in the past. So I think a good example would be like when I met Marissa, and this isn't just saying this because Marissa's in the room, something just felt like this was the woman of my dreams. So when I had the decision to marry her, it was like just everything felt right. So when I started trying to do this work with Ryan, he would always have me go back to Ryan's how I, your coach. Yeah. Ryan's my coach. You worked mm-hmm. with Ryan Yakomi. Um, yeah. And when I, he would always have me recall what those feelings were like now to your point. So yeah, you're recalling what the feelings were like and then bringing awareness to the actual location on the body, for example, your chest or, you know, sensations in your arms or whatever that like nervous system response. And it's almost like a, NLP kind of style, like a neuro linguistic programming kind of thing in yeah. that way, you know, cool. where you can, yeah. But with a caveat to that. So with the physical reactions, we want to look from the neck down basically, because mm-hmm. your intuition lives in the body, right? And okay. so we, yes. we want to try and get out of the head, right? Because that's the head is where logic lives. It's not that logic is bad. It's not that we don't need logic or that it doesn't, you know, play a role in protecting us and helping us, but we want to tune into the body and say, okay, you know, what types of breathing patterns am I starting to be? And I know this sounds like very intricate the way I'm explaining it, but when you're able to really tune into like, okay, like these are the physical reactions of like a yes, and these are the physical reactions of a no, it's easier to make decisions based off of your intuition once you're able to test those physical reactions kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it, I mean, it sounds simplistic, but in reality, it's like you're bringing a lot of awareness to what's going on like these are things you would have just if without 
consciously thinking about it, you would have just done it and not noticed how your body was feeling or not brought awareness to these different things going on. Yeah. So, so I think it's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, it sounds basic, but in reality, you're separating yourself from the feeling in a way and a more observing it instead of feeling it. It's, I, yeah. uh, I agree with that because it's funny. Like when I like, know I'm very certain about a decision. Like when I told AJ, we are going to open up Marissa's Fit Boutique and it is going to be successful. Like I can feel it in my bones. And I used to say to him that I used to tell yeah, him I'm that I'm like, what the hell are, what, what do you mean your what bones? Do you mean what does a bone feel, bones? feel like? What does that even mean? I'm like, I don't know. But anytime I can feel it in my bones, like it, I'm so, I feel so certain about it. But it's not that I just feel certain about it. Like I can physically feel certain about it. Like I have this radiating confidence coming from my bones. If that makes <laughs> any sense. And I think we heard a woman on the TV one was time. Barbara, Barbara Corcoran. Oh, she said it. She You're right, it in Barbara her, Corcoran. She read it in her book, yeah. She read oh it in gosh. her book. She said, I just knew I had to sell my real estate empire, which is worth like $167 million in New York City. Um, because I felt it in my bones. It was just time to move on. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, she yes, love it. her. <laughs> so, so to bring a little context to Barbara, so Barbara Corcoran, she's on the show Shark Tank wow, for a lot of you guys. Wow, all coming full circle. Great. Yeah, so, so a lot of you guys that watch the show Shark Tank, it's kind of cool because you get to see the different investors and business people and how they make decisions. So you have Mark Cuban, you have you know Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful. Barbara Corcoran is one of the sharks that sits on there a lot. And it's interesting because Barbara will make a majority, if not all of her investing decisions off of her gut reaction or most, mm -hmm. mostly her intuition. And she's open and, about that. And then you have other sharks that, that you that look exclusively at the finances and the numbers and both of them work quite well. Uh, you know, they all obviously are on the show and they're good investors, venture capitalists. So it's interesting how Barbara does that almost exclusively intuitively. So that's kind of funny when you say it's in her bones. It's like even financial decisions, even business decisions. I mean, all sorts of things can benefit when you can get really good at understanding your intuition. So um, yeah. interesting caveat, I think, to, to what you were talking about, Jolie. So yeah. So number one is you kind of recall something in the past mm -hmm. that, that was an intuitive decision. Number two, you kind of start bringing awareness to the sensory that is involved with it. What's kind of the third one? Yeah. Yeah. So the third one, I kind of like to dive into, you know, taking away the power from your inner critic. And so mm -hmm. like kind of like taking, not taking away the power of your logic. Again, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying logic's bad, but a lot of times when we're, you know, and I'll relate back to the car example, you know, sometimes you, like, you realize that something's a possibility, something can happen. Automatically, your mind starts going and going and going of like, I'm not worthy of this. I can't afford this. Worst you case know. scenario. Kind yeah, of worst thing. case. Yeah, worst case scenarios. And it's really the doubts. So it's not always the worst case. It's just like the doubts that kind of come up. And so what people, what I always kind of challenge people to do is like, okay, actually write out what what is your inner critic saying and ask yourself you know two questions is this serving me like are these words actually serving me and are these even true because nine times out of ten our ego just wants to hop in there and try and try to light things on fire and try to blow things up out of proportion and it's like okay are these things even true or is it just like a fear coming up is it just fear of like success yeah that's a good question so you start to ask yourself, is this true? So that's, that could filter out a lot of stuff. That's a good question. And then yeah. is, is this serving me is another really empowering question. So. And I think that's like, do you feel Jolie? Like that's where a lot of people stop. It's like at that step three where that kind of just. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's so true because it's like you, once you do that, you're starting to sit with yourself and I mean, you guys know this, like once you start diving into your fears, so much comes up right it's like yeah. something from like your that happened to you for five years old could like come out of just like you having this fear for buying a car what but a lot of times people will be like okay well like what do i do if my gut response and my logic like what if they don't add up and what if they don't come to the same response and it's like that's another big question that people come to and they they start catastrophizing what if i make the wrong decision and what if this happens and what if that happens and it's you know, can really kind of spiral out of control. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So in the, um, one of the people I, at least I think is a really good role model in the space of kind of balancing the intuition and the logic and how you make those decisions is Ray Dalio. I talk about him a lot because his 
his book's pretty influential and I like a lot of his, his YouTube content as well. Yeah. And he talks about that exact thing. He says, what do you do when your intuition doesn't align with the logic? And for those who don't know, Ray Dalio built a gigantic hedge fund, $60 billion, the company Bridgewater. And he's also uh, one of the prime, premier financial advisors in the world for the economy. And he's a billionaire. So he knows what he's doing in a way. And he wrote the book Principles. And a lot of principles is this conversation we're having here. Where is that kind of balance of the virtue? So um, what he says he does is it's like when, when, in, when intuition doesn't align with his logic, he waits. And, exactly. when, mm. and that's all he says, right? So when intuition and logic are aligned, action. When intuition and logic aren't aligned, it's easy. You don't do it. And then yeah. when one of them is there and the other one is not there, you wait. And I thought that was simple, but wow, does that help with a lot of decisions because oh my gosh, I mean, yeah. how many times that runs up? So I'm curious too. And like, um, I mean, what do you do? So like, you know, when <laughs> it's just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious because you do a lot of things off of intuition and, and I know the logic kind of gets in the way, but it's always trying to figure out what is that relationship and how do you kind of visualize that relationship? And you've made a lot of like life-changing decisions, I would say in like the last like- Without like, yeah, without like this crazy emotion. A few involved. months, <laughs> Like you're just like, yeah, this is just where we got to go. We do this. <laughs> it's, just... it's, it's funny because it's, well, I mean, that's a whole nother story, but I just decided it was like, all right, if, if it's something that I'm, you know, feeling like the pull to, like the pull is your intuition and the push is your ego. If I'm being, if I'm pulled to it, like I'm going to do it. And so it's like, that's just kind of what I go off of. And just because I don't show the, the doubts and things that kind of come into my mind, like all over social media, it doesn't mean I don't have them, but it definitely, I think that the media has kind of spun intuition into this, I don't know, the word tailspin of like, you know, sometimes making an intuitive decision isn't always a snap decision. Like it's not always like, okay, like I know the answer in three seconds. And so I'm just going to go with it. Like, you know, if we revert back to shark tank, a lot of those people, you know, like we only see a, like, I don't know, it's like an eighth of the actual, you know, pitch that these people are pitching to the sharks because those people, like the sharks are asking questions. They're sitting, on, they need to gather their information, but Barbara does, she goes off of her intuition with it. And so it's, you know, I take a lot of time to answer your question fully. Like I, I take the time and I do, you know, run through these steps. And if I feel any doubts, like I've got a really solid, you know, support system of coaches and, you know, my husband's awesome with it and stuff, but I think I've got a really good take on, okay, like this is intuitive or this is, you know, and this is going to work or like, mm, you know, maybe this is going to work, but not right now. And that's usually kind of the case. Okay. So just to recap, so the first step is we recall something that's happened in the past um, that we use as an intuitive response. The second one is we start to observe kind of our physiological response to this decision. And then the third step is we start to first ask ourselves, you know, as doubt would start to creep its way in, we'll start to ask ourselves some questions. Is this true? Is this serving me? And how can we work through the process when it's something that may be untrue, we can dismiss it. If it's not serving me, we can start to address it and we can start to ask ourselves some very empowering questions in that regard, which I think are two great questions that are also very empowering. Um, on that note, I guess, how do you, so when you're addressing doubt, how do you know, and before we get to four, um, when you're addressing doubt, how do you know if this is something that's a fear that's restraining you because it could be devastating or if it's a fear that's constraining you, if that makes sense? So like, it could be uh, like the, I use the analogy of the walking on the ice. If it's thin ice out there, this fear could be keeping you safe and it could be healthy or it could be a fear that's, you know, just limiting you from walking out on the ice when the ice is fine. So it's like, I guess, how do you kind of differentiate the two from a fear that's keeping you safe from a fear that's just holding you back and it's not serving you? It's going to sound so silly, but you almost, you almost always know, like you almost kind of have this, this inner knowing of like, because intuition, it's understanding, it's instinct, it's emotion and impulse is like an urge or, or like a push kind of a thing from the ego. And so when you're kind of looking at fear, you know, we have this whole amazing human body system that helps to protect us. And we do have these instinctual kind of knowings, but it can be 
so easy to get caught up in like the fear and in this like oh my gosh like what's happening what's you know what's gonna happen with this is this even right and so I totally get where you're coming from and that again it sounds really simplistic when I say it but it does bring me to like the fourth and final kind of uh, layer to this which is like asking for guidance and listening and by doing that what you're doing is you're giving your subconscious a break right and so so many studies have come out and shown that like when we can give our subconscious a break either by like meditating or exercising or just asking for guidance by you know from god or the universe and then kind of circle back to it whether it's you know an hour later or a day later you've given you've given your brain time to rest you've given your you know your whole system time to rest and you can come back to that decision with a different frame of mind a fresh set of eyes kind of thing and actually come to that you know intuitive decision yeah, that's interesting because that was going to be one of my follow-up questions too with, with number three, you know, you start experiencing doubt and you're trying to, you know, walk through the fear. Um, and like you said, it's, you know, it's kind of a feeling that you get, like you kind of just have this no. And that's where I wonder, is it is it a voice that you hear in your head or is it a certain place that you can, you know, sink into? I'm kind of trying to to pinpoint exactly where are you finding this feeling and from what one of the questions that, that I ask to at least address this is, I think it's a very good question. We can talk more about this as well is, is this coming from a place of love or is this coming from somewhere else? Because Lola, listen, we're on the, we're on a podcast right now. <laughs> I know she wants to be like the fourth commentator. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we can always, she's part of the crew now. Um, okay. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, does this come from a place of love or does this come from somewhere else? Cause typically if you're doing it, if you're asking yourself, how is this going to serve more people? How is this going to, how is my mission going to help others? How is this decision going to grow me into the person I need to become? Or is this decision happening because I need to get a result or it needs to be actionable or it needs to be this or that or something that's very selfish and, and, and quick and short-sighted? And I found that that's been very helpful yeah. to try to discern the two. Because when you're doing something from a place of love, it's, you can be reluctant to do it. You can be like, I don't know if I'm, I want to do that right now but it's coming from a place of love. It is your higher path. And there's that resistance in a way. And that's something that I think people confuse with intuition. They think intuition is just doing what I want to do right now because yeah. I, it's the, it's just seek pleasure, seek pleasure, this hedonistic kind of thing. But in reality, I think intuition can pull you through resistance if you treat it the right way. That's something that's very, very important for people to understand. It's like, Oh, intuitively, I just felt like this. And I just felt like that. And I just felt like this. Like, no, no, you didn't yeah. do the, You didn't do the inner work to find <laughs> out if this is coming from your higher path. Yeah. That's, that's, I think, a huge di di differentiator. But I like what you said on that option four. It's about creating that separation, that yeah. ability to kind of disconnect from it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually, I'm I'm loving this. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. This is like such a beautiful way to explain this, Jolie. And you're doing like a phenomenal job um, because I really believe too, it's, you know, when you can kind of give up that control, when you finally just like set it and let it be, set it and let it go, and that you are not con like you are not attached to this outcome, like you need to control what happens from this, and that you have your best interests in mind, kind of thing, and that when you can kind of give it to a higher power mm. and just let that guide you, and it kind of gives you the relief of like the pressure is not on you anymore. Like I can ask for help in this time of you know stress or difficulty, and that I can be led to, you know, um, the place that I'm searching for without me having to know right this second how it's going to be done, what it's going to look like, and that I can just kind of let it go, let that stress, that anxiety, or, you know, whatever next step you want to take, um, kind of let it set be free and give up a little bit of control and kind of see where the path takes you instead of you trying to control where the path constantly takes you and knowing that there is a higher power there who wants good for you and yeah. that is going to help you along the way. Yeah. Yeah, I think, totally. I think an analogy I like to use is if you ever, if you ever play chess, I don't know if you play chess, Julie, but um, when you, when you play playing chess, so one of the things that a, a novice chess player may do is they start zoning into a spot on the board where they, where they start playing and they forget about the other chess pieces that are on the board and are available and in play other places. And an experienced person can kind of start getting you to focus in on one area and then they can swipe your, you know, a, 
a queen or a rook or something out of the way from a different part of the board because you weren't stepping back and observing the whole board. I think that's kind of what, you know, being able to reset like that could do for you. It, it opens you up to another option or another problem because you've been trying to solve the problem a certain way. And by almost like resetting your mind, you can find other solutions that can come in because you're observing things that you didn't really want to observe before. I think, mm. and I think that's one way of opening it up. And just to piggyback on what Marissa says, I know like, you know, we're Christians and we believe that you can, you can actually ask, you know, you can ask God for help and he can provide that guidance for you when you do run into those issues and those struggles. And yeah. it's completely transformed our lives. I know for a lot of our decision-making. So um, yeah. I think that's interesting. Was there anything else on four uh, about just kind of giving yourself that space and asking? Well, so there, that's, so that's kind of half of it, right? Is asking and, and, yeah. you know, surrendering, right? If you want to, you know, surrender to a God or the universe or, you know, whether it's prayer that you're asking for or writing it out, but being open to listening, right? So that's what we sometimes don't want to do because it's like, if we ask the universe for a sign, I'm guilty of this too. It's like, okay, I ask for it and I see it in some way. And I'm like, oh, wait, like, can you show it to me again? And this, you know, kind of goes into a bigger sphere of, uh, you know, like a bigger realm of things to, to discuss. But it's like when, you know, you ask for a sign or you ask for an answer, or you ask for guidance, like believe in it when it shows up and like be open to receiving mm -hmm. whatever is come through. Because even if it's not what you intended on receiving, like just be open and be like, okay, like that's, that's the sign I was asking for. Or like that's, that's what I've been waiting to hear. Yeah, that kind of comes back to the the resistance a little bit too. It's like sometimes you might have a path that could be difficult or challenging um, and you got to go with it. You know, you got to kind of, and that's really what surrendering into it is. Like people picture surrendering as it, all right, I put my hands up, I lay on the couch and I'm just going to see what happens. It's like, that's not surrendering. Surrendering is when you do get the information, when it does come through and your intuition does tell you the right thing to do in that time. It's about executing to the standard that was given to you. And I think that's what people like to forget you know, or, or people that maybe misunderstand how this all works. It's very difficult to truly surrender because sometimes you could like surrender into telling the truth, which could be very hard, yeah. you know, so stuff like that. And it's just, those are the types of things that intuition guides you in the right direction. Totally. I love how you put that. So true. Yeah. That's interesting. So this was, that was a really good, really good question to answer. I think, um, how, I could, I mean, that gives you like four really good steps on how to break this down. So those of you that are listening, I know this is one of the big struggles that people run into is what is that balance? Do I just, I mean, when we look at properties right now, so we're going through the process right now of looking at a property and I'm trying to struggle with it. Like my intuition is saying one thing and now I'm putting together the numbers and I'm crunching everything and I'm trying to discern are the numbers um, going to scare me away from a deal or not. And it's just, you know, so it's kind of like, how do you, how do you make that? that connection between everything. And I know a lot of people, especially men like me that, that think very masculinely don't understand that there is that intuitive side to how you can make some of your decisions. And it's just yeah. can really benefit you anywhere from fitness into how you run your business. Yeah. And the more you start to do, like, even if like you're making these big decisions in your life, whether it's, you know, buying a house or moving to a new hometown or, you know, buying a car, whatever it is, going through these steps for the bigger decisions in your life makes it that much easier when you have to make like those day-to-day -day or those decisions in the workplace or you know not things like brushing your teeth that you like have to do as a routine like that's not what I'm talking about but the smaller you know more day-to-day -day things you'll start to notice those physical responses you'll start to notice just things feeling lighter and you're like okay like I can trust this this is actually my inner voice this is my intuition and yeah. So it's kind of like that baseline, but it's almost like you have to start big in order to really kind of incorporate this in the day to day, if that makes sense. Yeah. Actually, what I took away from naturally, I think it's perfect because I speak about this to the women I train too about trusting yourself, having that trust within yourself too. Like, you know, you honestly, you, you can't listen to your intuition. You can't listen to the dialogue that wants to help you internally if you don't trust yourself, if you don't trust the information coming forward, if you don't trust that this is coming from a higher power. Um, so I think that is really important too. I think that's a really good point to touch upon as well. 
Um, and I think this is actually a really good segue into what you've been hosting recently to Jolie um, in New York, because Jolie lives in New York City. Like, you want to make things happen. Well, we're going to be visiting you guys here in a couple couple days, right? I'm yeah, so and so she pumped. like she is a New York City personal trainer. She has created her own program out there. Life that coach. She runs. She Life is coach. An incredible guys. Jolie knows her stuff. Usually, we do the plugs at the beginning to really hype up her her work and everything but Jolie is somebody that is an expert in her field and in intuitive intuitive Absolutely. wellness it's it's incredible so this is some of the best information you guys are going to get so what do they say if you can do anywhere you can awesome. do anywhere yeah. <laughs> I Especially. don't know if that's what they say that's what I'm feeling like though <laughs> <laughs> oh you can oh Jolie, my please talk about you know what kind of events you are hosting right now because I think this is so important for people to hear thank you yeah I'm so excited for you guys to come and um, and, and see it too, Marissa. I know you're going to attend the next one in April, but, um, so I hold, my events are called Soulful, um, S-O-U-L-F-U-L-L, -L, and I kind of, I, I really created these out of necessity, out of selfishness, basically. This is something I really needed for myself. When I was going through a whole bunch of transition and change last year, I was going through, I was leaving a job. I was taking on, you know, this full time. I was prepping for a wedding. We had just moved. We had just had to <laughs> give up a pet. Like there was just a few things going on. Just a, just a few. And, you know, all of this was happening in the springtime, the, you know, the season of rebirth and growth and change. And I, I remember I was lifting, I was going to deadlifts in the gym and I don't, it was like 150 pounds or something. I don't remember, but I just heard this voice of like, why are you trying to add more resistance to your life right now? Like, why are you adding? And I was like, okay, mic drop, like what? And it just kind of occurred to me, like, I need to move more with my intuition. I need to bring my training skills to my own life. But this kind of led me you know it's it's evolved over the over the year that i've been hosting them and i do more guided meditation more breath work i do some reiki some energy healing on people the women who come and it's really about bringing the women together bringing this you know sisterhood tribe of women together who are going through different transitions and changes in their lives and they want to you know grow their their love for themselves, but also be able to tune into their intuition, tune into their soul's purpose and not have to go to one place to get yoga and one place to do breath work. And like no one here that I have found is doing this type of wow. combination of healing. And it excites me because it's like, okay, this is just, it's actually not about me at all. Like I am the vessel kind of delivering this to you. And I want everyone to really be able to create those authentic relationships and create authentic spiritual practices to help bring them closer to what it is that they want most out of life. And so that, that's been the most exciting part. And I'm gonna, I, I'm just, I guess I'm gonna announce this here, but I'm gonna be doing this completely virtually, um, probably early summer. Oh, wow. I've had a lot of people across the, across the world who are like, um, can I do this? I don't live in New York. And it got me really thinking of like, okay, how can I make this work? And so it's coming. It's, it's going to happen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am so excited because ironically, the same weekend, Jolie will be hosting her event on April 14th. We will be in New York, um, but obviously that doesn't always plan so well most of the time. So yes, this is something I know so many women would love to be involved with. Um, is it women and men, Jolie, or is it women predominantly right now? So, you know, I had opened this round um, in New York to men and women. And because in the last, well, I'm not to go off on a tangent, but in the past I've had men reach out and I was like, sorry, this is only for women. I don't, and I didn't really know why I was saying that. And then this time around, I didn't actually have anyone reach out. So I feel like okay, I'm going to stick with women until I have enough male clientele to kind of reach out. Cause there's, I'm sure AJ, you've seen this too. There's so many men who want to, you know, really balance their masculine and feminine energies and really kind of step into this, you know, their spiritual growth and things like that. And oh so my right gosh. now it's just women. Yeah. But. I was talking to my mentor about that and it's just how many men, they, craving it. they're craving it, but they can't talk about it, you know? And 
and I'm not one to get overly vulnerable. I, I would say that um, I know a lot of men, I think, I think personally, and this is just me being me, that there's a very fine line between being whiny, being vulnerable and being a victim, right? So I think that it's very important to understand that, you know, from a masculine standpoint, it is, it is important to be vulnerable, but you also want to make sure that you're in, you're in the pursuit of some type of resolution. And then it's not just, you know, victimization of it. Um, but back to what you were kind of talking about in New York, Jolie, is like, yeah, I think there's a ton of men that are craving this type of work that they want to learn more about their kind of their spirituality or the, the energy and the fem masculine and feminine, how that kind of works and how, where this movement's going and what it can do for you and, and connecting with that higher power, that higher place. I think this is all cool stuff that you're doing. So where can, um, so where can people find out more about it or where can they sign up if they want to go if they're in the city i know we got lots of listeners out of new york city or uh, out east anywhere and where you're gonna be doing this virtually how can they find more information yeah so i'm social media i'm all over instagram and facebook and on instagram it's um jolie.rose underscore um but probably easier for them to just go to my website jolierizzo.com and in there, you'll, you'll find links to social media. You'll find different testimonials from people who've attended um, my events and stuff. And any New Yorkers, I'm still taking, um, I've got a couple spots left for the rest of spring. So April and May for this beautiful season of rebirth and growth. So, mm. yeah. It is an incredible season, right? And it's like, I know our life just mimics the seasons. Oh my gosh, to a T. Yeah, to a T, right? So winter is typically death. There's some type of revolutionary thing that happens in our lives. Fall, things start falling apart. You know, winter, they're dead. Spring, all sorts of new opportunities arise. Summer is the heart. Summer is the, the nurturing and the building and the growth and the fast pace. And then fall is the harvest again. And then it starts falling apart. So it's like, it's kind of like how our how our life seems to rotate. And it's cool now that it's spring, you're springing forward into a new direction. You know, we have Easter, the rebirth, the resurrection, right? You have all sorts of cool stuff that's going on during this time frame, and it's just beautiful. Um, so New York City, they can reach you, jolyrizzo.com, you said? Yes. jolyrizzo.com. That is R-I-Z-Z-O? Yes, it is. All right. You're not going to change that to <laughs> Rose yet? <laughs> it, not my website, but I'm, yeah. Not my I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just messing. <laughs> Oh, it's such a process. That's a whole nother story, but it's been a process to change. Oh, tell us about it, right? So we switched phone numbers with Marissa's Fit Boutique. That was a process. That was a process. Because <laughs> oh like your, all your SEO is tied into phone numbers, for those of you that don't know. So like your SEO can start to drop if you're not using consistent name, address, phone number on all your different social media platforms or every type of thing that's out there. Because Google looks at that footprint and some of those backlinks and stuff. So it's, uh, that's something to think about too when you guys are thinking of changing up or pivoting is go to a number barn or something like that or, you know, go daddy, get a smart line, get a number that's not going to change. That doesn't matter if you move or do whatever. So, um, yeah. but yeah, it is a process. So Yeah, so much, so much to think about. Well, cool, Julie. So just one, one final question for you and that is just what, if there was just one thing you could, you, that you learned about yourself over the last, you know, several months, I'll say the last recent months um, that you would want to share with other people, what would that thing be that could really help maybe change your life and help transform them? Oh my gosh, I love this question. I love it so much. And it's so funny because I had, March was a very long month. Like I felt like, okay, April 1st, like March was a very long year, but it was such um, a pivotal month in me learning that it's really important for me every day to allow my inner child to come out in whatever way that she wants to. And I kind of associate her with my feminine energy of like, you know, I was very creative as a child. I was very free flowing and free spirited and things like that. And so by bringing her out any way that I could, even for an hour a day, um, really helped bring more joy to my days and bring more joy to my work and helped me be a better coach. So that, that's how really good. Yeah. How did you, how did I you, how do you, that. how do you solicit the inner child with a van with candy or something? No, I'm just kidding. With a you have the van now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, candy is a big part of it. Like I always keep candy in our house, like regardless of the nutrition content. But when I was younger, I would always wear just crazy outfits and crazy pants. And so on the days where I just have like my virtual coaching clients and I don't actually have to leave my apartment, I will put on what I call inner child pants. 
And so I have like these crazy printed pants or like sparkly leggings and like my clients can't see them because I'm sitting at a desk and now I've just blown my cover so everybody knows. But it's one of those things where it's like, I know it's there and it helps me just to kind of, <laughs> it sounds so, so ridiculous, but it helps me like, I don't know, tune in a little bit more to like, okay, what am I feeling? And, you know, sometimes I'll dance a little bit. Um, I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, I think it's a great tips, Julie. You are just on fire. Well, you, with... I, I'm just really impressed with how intentional you are about everything. Super. I mean, you're just so observant about, and I know a lot of like, uh, I had a client that was a really intuitive woman and she was like, I mean, she could analyze her whole life like poetry. It would just be nuts. She'd notice like a songbird would, you know, land on her freaking the hood of her car and it would just mean something. And it was every single thing. She was so aware of the synchronicities and so aware of herself and everything and so intentional about everything. That's what you remind me of. It's just so intentional. I love you guys. Yeah. It's- Can this podcast never end? You guys are making me feel so great and I love you both so much. <laughs> oh, we love you. I feel- no, but that that means a lot to me though thank you I I love that I'm intentional but sometimes I can get very in my head with things so I love that intuition is a thing that we can you know really hone in on and really tune up to tune in and tune up to yeah yeah I love the I love dressing up for occasions too I mean what a great way to get in and out of character if you will right so oh, like, AJ loves doing that I love doing that right so I'm a different I, look when I dress up I can move into characters it's an, it's totally different the way I do my hair or the way if I wear a suit and tie I can I can polish myself beard, up beautifully, no beard. or I can put a cowboy hat on with a beard and you know dress rough and bring my guitar and I can be just that starving artist kind of you know archetype and it's just wonderful yeah. how you can move and I know people you know, a little tip, I guess, for people that are interviewing. Sometimes if you're doing a phone interview, just dressing up in a suit and tie and getting on your phone and doing the interview gets you into this character that you are a professional, you're ready to go. And it kind of convinces you that you're in a different role. And I could see how that would work for pulling out a different archetype, like the inner child or, you know, the nature lover, put on your hiking boots with jorts or something, you know? (laughs) (laughs) It's so true. Clothing is such a cool way to bring out different personalities. And I remember uh, my wedding. Do you remember your hair? Do you remember doing your hair for my wedding? Me? Yes. You. (laughs) Was it hilarious? No, you were like, I feel like Marissa, you were trying to help it because you were like not combing it over. That sounds terrible. But you had it like. Oh, I had really long hair. So I was, this was, this was. okay. And the sunglasses and Marissa kept on, you were like, he's going for a look, Jolie. Like, just, just let it happen. He's going (laughs) for a look. Yes, it was, and it was the white suit coat with the jeans. And I was so weirded out that we were going to a wedding and you were wearing jeans. Look, Miami Vice was the archetype. I was trying to go for at that time. And it was a look. Yeah, no. sure. <laughs> I still say biggest regrets of 2018 was chopping the mullet. I mean, I can say that with a straight face. I should, I want a mullet so bad. That could be a great archetype. I mean, think about that business, the front party in the back, you know, you can, you're just, you're, you're 50, 50, you know, you're in or not. Yeah. So wife will not let that happen. Nonetheless, um, dressing up, changing your character, you know, it allows you to kind of move in and out of those archetypes. I love that advice, getting in touch with your inner child, pulling out that energy that really serves you, that creativity that makes you unique and powerful. It's awesome. So, um, well, Jolie, this was wonderful. I, we're really excited to see you here in a week and we can take some professional photo for the cover art of this. I don't know, but this was a wonderful podcast. Thank you so much for jumping on. Once again, everybody can find you at Jolie, J-O-L-I-E-R-I-Z-Z-O.com. Jolie Rizzo.com. That's correct, right, Jolie? Yes. Awesome. And they can find you on Instagram or Facebook or any of the other socials as well. Um, guys, if you are listening to this, you can follow me at Aaron Armstrong 33 on Instagram. You can also go to my website, AaronJArmstrong.com. Some also exciting news from our front is that I'm now launching officially my AV TV platform on YouTube. So we're going to start providing a lot higher quality content from YouTube, all sorts of different stuff you guys have never seen, some different speaking engagements from behind the scenes that you guys will be brought into and start seeing some awesome clips. They're short videos, two minutes, three minutes sometimes. You can just get that pack of value, that highlight tape, if you will, that right there on AV TV. So go to my YouTube channel, check that out. You can go look, search AV TV, or you can look at Aaron Armstrong and find me on YouTube. So Julie, once again, thank you so much for jumping on the show. You're an awesome guest. This was so enlightening for me so and Marissa. Much fun. And I know thank our listeners are going to love this episode so much. So any final words, Jolie? 
Oh, no, just thank you guys so, so much. I love both of you and your missions and just what you guys are about. And I'm so excited to see you guys in like a week, in a week and a half or whatever. Yes, ma'am. So we love you. Anybody out in New York City, shoot us a note. Go info at AaronJArmstrong.com. So thanks a lot, guys. And that's the show.